It is the Gorn Potentia. We are back. It is the Sharks versus the Dragons, round 21. Listen, the squad is up there. We're not going to talk individually about each player right here because my voice is getting sore. It is 10.40 at night in Sydney, Australia. But I guess we'll talk to, obviously, the big talking points of this squad. Um, Royce Hunt is listed as a reserves for Cronulla, so we're not too sure what could happen there. He was injured last week. Kay Dykes makes his debut in place of Will Kennedy, who is facing five or six weeks on the sideline after undergoing his ankle surgery. Um, obviously, Adam and grandfather John also played for the Sharks in Dykey's family. Um, again, it's got to be the Nico Hines show. It's got to be the Matt Moylan show. This team, it just it looks good on paper. You look at you can have an Andrew Fafita on the bench. You can have an Aiden Tolman on the bench. Um, Nico Hines is looking at one of the buys of the season. Matt Moylan looks rejuvenated with Nico Hines next to him. Um, obviously, Will Kennedy is a massive loss to this squad, but I mean, I'm going to go out there quite early. I'm going to go Sharks in a win here because I think they have way, way too much here. But I guess what stands out to you from this lineup and then we'll pop up the Dragons and you can give me the same kind of feedback on what you think of the Dragon squad. Yeah. Look, this squad individually, or if you take it individually player, they're not as they're together. They're strong, and this they've proven this this whole season long from Craig Fitzgibbon that defense, as the saying goes, attack wins your games, but defense wins your premiership. So Sharks are just building on this defense based effort of keeping the the opposition. The points of the rack up down. I wouldn't say scoreless because there's been a t- couple of times with the cross, but they just try to keep it as like as little as possible. You know, uh, Nick Hines, one of the top three buyers of the season, in my opinion. But if there is a bloke to open this game, it's going to have to be Matt Moylan in the six jersey. He's, he's going to come alive, and f- for a bloke. It's, it's it's a really weird one. You look at it, you just look at it. He was he signed a five year deal at the Pembroke Panthers. Got told by from Gus Gould to the public, this is our man to take us into the future. A season into it, he gets shipped off to the Sharks, riddled with injuries, with hamstring, lower back injuries, and sitting on the sideline for most of the the rest of his contract. And now he's finally found his rhythm, he's found someone to almost complimentary him. Like, you, you see, you look at Nico Hines, he's more of a run type, play, first type player than that organising seven we see in Cronk and Thurston and, um, you know, Joey almost f- from the years we've been around. And they're just playing really, really well together. And th- this is another team that is a dark horse come the final season and it, it just shows you on the on the, the uh, on the ladder. Um, they they're doing well for for a rookie coach, and I will say if if it came down to the Dally M's, I know who I'm tipping for rookie coach uh, for coach of the season. Um, it is this man in Craig Fitzgibbon. Then I'm going to tip him before even looking at the Dragons side. Sharks going to get done at home. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, absolutely buzzing um, for Moylan. Um, haven't had too much interaction with him, but he had, he was an absolute baller when he was the teacher's aide for PDHP back at Erskine Park back in the day. So absolutely cracking lad. And for him, I'm glad that those injuries have slowed up. But again, we will put the uh, Dragon side up on the screen. Um, I'll let you talk to the side. Obviously, you don't have to list them. It is an unchanged lineup from the team that went down quite embarrassingly to the Cowboys last weekend. I guess the stat you've got to speak to when you are talking about this is the Dragons have only won two from 11 against their top eight opposition in 2022. So what are your thoughts on that? Obviously, one was the Roosters, who are just only just in the top eight. But (laughs) I guess what are your thoughts towards that? And then who stands out in this lineup to make the difference besides, obviously, Ben Hunt? Yeah, look. Any team, regardless of who it is, if you don't score points and if you go scoreless in a half, 
just just go hit the showers early. Um, it was 10-8 at half time, and I thought the Dragons really had us on the toes and actually was a bit worried to think that they could run away with it, especially at home at Cogra. Um, but obviously, Cowboys doing what they do, and the reason why we should be minor premiers coming into the regular season. Uh, look, Big again, goal, mate. Big <laughs> it, look, it, it's a possibility, but we'll wait and see. But if it is one bloke, and again, I'm going to have to call him out because he is the man on those big bucks. It is Ben Hunt. Now, he's not – now, would you call him the multi-million dollar player, player or would you call him like he's finally settled? He's forgotten – We, as a Queenslander, I've forgotten the 2015 – Drop ball incident in the grand final. Oh, I don't, I don't think he'll ever. I don't think you'll ever forget that. I think the best part for him, obviously, was winning the series this year. Um, mm. It does maybe for fans that go for the Dragons or go for the Broncos, they kind of shut up a little bit now and they give him that respect. But mate, the way he has played this year, I think, is an absolute lock for the Daly M Award and. I'm honestly, after, obviously, this game, the Raiders, they play the Titans and the Tigers. I'm, I'm generally excited to see how far he goes um, in these last couple of games. Mm, yeah. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one here. And uh, what, what is your prediction of the uh, the two uh, of this game? Oh, obviously, it is a derby. Um, if there's one thing I've learned, that when the Dragons have a derby against the Russell on Anzac Day, they somehow always show up and then they're shit the next time we play them. So I think this game obviously goes down to a few things. Obviously, the weather. The Dragons are wet weather specialists. Um, but I think I'm going to slide with you on this one. I'm going to say Ben Hunt cannot get this done by himself. Um, I think I'm going to obviously side with the Sharks, 13+. plus. I think they're going to blow the Dragons away. And you could put a line through the Dragons for obviously the top eight this year. That will do them. They'll be done for the season. They can book Mad Monday. But Baxter, obviously, it is getting quite late. So we will push on. We will move into the next game. So, guys, if you are new around here, we do do this every week. We go through each individual game. We post it just before kickoff, an hour or two before, just so that you can only listen to your team if you want to. And you can go back and listen to a few short, I guess, episodes um, about each review. But... Baxter, again, thank you for joining me and we will be back very, very soon with the Bulldogs versus the Cowboys.